Hey guys, it's me, Ashley the Math Tutor. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Sorry it took so long to post. I work full time, so sometimes uh, I have time constraint. But anyway, let's get into today's video. So today we are going to be doing trig substitution integrals. I know this sounds similar to the integrals that we did in the last section, but this one is different. These types of integrals have to deal with integrating functions involving one of the following square root expressions. The square root of a squared minus x squared, the square root of x squared plus a squared, or the square root of x squared minus a squared. So here are some important trig rules to remember. You might want to write all of these down. First, let's start off with the Pythagorean trig identities. Um, first off, we have sine theta squared plus cosine theta squared equals 1. And then with a little, you know, algebra, um, we can um, switch that to sine theta squared is equal to 1 minus cosine theta squared. And also, cosine theta squared is equal to 1 minus sine theta squared. Also here, for tan and, sec and secant, we have... Uh, secant theta squared is equal to 1 plus tan theta squared and then tan theta squared is equal to secant theta squared minus 1 and for cosecant and cotangent we have cosecant theta squared is equal to 1 plus cotangent theta squared and also cotangent theta squared is equal to cosecant theta squared minus 1 okay so let's talk about trig ratios so with this triangle right here this angle is theta and the opposite side of theta, this we'll call it the opposite side, that's why I put op. And then the adjacent side, I put adj or edge. And then the hypotenuse, I put hyp or something or hit. But like, that's um, what I labeled it as. Also, you can see it here op means opposite side, adj means adjacent side, and hit means hypotenuse. So given that, um, the sine of this sine theta is op the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So the sine of this angle would be opposite over hypotenuse. Similarly, um, the cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. The tan of or tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. And since um, since cosecant theta is basically the reciprocal of sine theta, cosecant theta is the hypotenuse over the opposite, well, the hypotenuse over the opposite side, you know, and then secant theta is the reciprocal of cosine theta, so secant theta would be hypotenuse over adjacent, and then cotangent theta is the reciprocal of tangent theta, and that would be adjacent over opposite. Also, it's important to remember these, just like important little stuff here, like I said, uh, cosecant's the reciprocal of sine, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, cotangent is the reciprocal of tan. Also remember tan theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta, and then cotangent theta is equal to cosine theta over sine theta, since these two are reciprocals. And last but not least, we have our double angle formulas. These we don't really use in any of the examples that I go over today, but it's still important to know just in case you come across an integral and like you don't know how to like break it down any further with any trig rules you could possibly use these um we're not going to use it in any examples today like i said but just like it's important to have so it's important to write these down too so anyway like i said these are important trig rules to remember so feel free to just you know write them down and anything um feel free to pause the video to write them down um they're all here so yeah feel free to pause and write them down but they're super duper important now, I'm pretty sure, considering that this is Calc 2 material, that you guys already know your trig derivatives and trig integrals, but just in case you don't, as a little refresher, these are all the basic trig derivatives and trig integrals. Feel free to write, uh, pause the video right now and write them down, because this is super important too. All right, so let's get into trig substitution. Now, before we start getting into our examples, this is also another very important rule for trig substitution. Um, if you see anywhere in the integral um, the square the format of uh, the square root of a squared minus x squared you let x equal a sine theta for the square root of if, if anywhere in the integral you see the square root of a squared plus x squared or the square root of x squared plus a squared you let x equal a tan theta 
And lastly, for the square root of x squared minus a squared, you let x equal a secant theta. All right, let's start off with example one. So for example one, we have the integral of the square root of nine minus x squared all over x squared dx. So let's start off with step one. For step one, we're gonna choose what we will let x equal. So we have the, the integral of the square root of nine minus x squared all over x squared dx, right? So um, this right here, the square root, it's the square root of nine minus x squared. And this matches the format of the square root of a squared minus x squared because the x squared is on the right, there's a minus sign in the middle, then it's nine, which is the square root. So then this, the square root in this equation matches the square root of a squared minus x squared. So because of that, we're gonna let x equal a sine theta. Um, since we let x equal a sine theta, we have to, you know, solve for a. Um, so as we can see, like I said, nine minus x squared equals the format of the square, I mean the square root of nine minus x squared equals the format of the square root of a squared minus x squared. So since this is equal to this, we can say that nine would be equal to a squared. So since nine is equal to a squared, we can just solve for a. So you take the square root of both sides, and then you get three is equal to a. Since, let me make that look more like an a as opposed to a nine, sorry. Three is equal to a. Since three, let me put since, sorry, since three equals a, I'm gonna make that look more like an A and not a nine. Since three, oh, almost shook the camera, sorry. Since three equals A, we can say that X is equal to three sine theta. So for step two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna rewrite the equation in terms of theta. So the equation so far, uh, it's, um, it's nine minus X, the square root of nine minus X squared all over x squared dx. So since x is equal to three sine theta, that means everywhere we see x and stuff, we have to rewrite it in terms of theta and stuff. So where we see x, we're gonna put it three sine theta instead. So that would be the square root of nine minus three sine theta squared all over three sine theta squared. Now I can't put dx cause I have to put it in terms of theta. So we have to put it in terms of d theta, not dx. Now, how do we do that? You may ask. Since x is equal to three sine theta, if you take the derivative of x with respect to theta, you would get dx over d theta is equal to, um, three cosine theta. Now, if you cross multiply the dx over d theta with the three cosine theta, you can think of this as three, co three cosine theta over one, you would get dx is equal to um, three cosine theta d theta. So if we were to add the d theta part to here, you would get the square the integral of the square root of nine minus three sine theta squared all over three sine theta squared times three cosine theta d theta. This right here, this is the equation in terms of theta, this whole thing right here. All right, let's go to step three. So for step three, we're gonna simplify the equation. Now, the goal is to simplify it into something easy to integrate by using trig identities. And I'll show you what I mean. So, 
what do we have so far? After we uh, transformed it into, into terms of theta, we have the integral of the square root of 9 minus 3 sine theta squared all over 3 sine theta and that whole thing squared times 3 cosine theta d theta, right? So in terms of simplifying, let's start off with this, um, this term first. So 3 sine theta squared, right? This, if you um, distribute out the square, it would just be 9, it would just equal 9 sine theta squared. So now we can rewrite this equation and everywhere we see 3 sine theta squared, we can put 9 sine squared, sine, uh, sine theta squared. So we got 9 minus 9 sine theta squared all over 9 sine theta squared times 3 cosine theta d theta. So next, let's start with this term over here. Let's simplify that. So um, the square root of 9 minus 9 sine theta squared. Let's start with what's inside the square root. So 9 minus 9 sine theta squared, right? If we factor out the 9, we would get 9 times 1 minus sine theta squared, right? And if you remember from the trig identities, 1 minus sine theta squared is just cosine theta squared. So we would get 9 times cosine theta squared. All right, so now instead of um, 9 minus 9 sine theta squared, instead of that, underneath there, we can put 9 cosine theta squared. So let's rewrite the equation again. And let's put the square root, under the square root, we'll put 9 cosine theta squared. And then all over 9 sine theta squared times 3 cosine theta d theta. Now let's use, now remember, like I said, like pay attention to like how I'm simplifying it because the goal is to use trig identities in order to simplify it to something that's like easy to integrate, basically. Um, excuse me. So anyway, so let's use this, um, let's use this term again to simplify. So we have the um the square root of 9 cosine theta squared so the square root of 9 cosine theta squared right that would be um if we were to simplify this it would simplify out to the square root of 9 times the square root of cosine theta squared the square root of 9 is just 3 and then the square root of cosine theta squared would just be cosine theta so where we see the square root of 9 cosine theta squared, we can just replace that with 9 cosine theta. I mean, with, sorry, sorry, not 9. We can just replace that with 3 cosine theta. So let's rewrite it again. We have 3 cosine theta all over 9 sine theta squared times 3 cosine theta d theta. Let's multiply these two and we would get 9 cosine theta squared all over 9 sine theta squared d theta. So like I said, um, the goal is to simplify it into something that's easy to integrate. And um, if you remember like using, if you remember the trig identities that I showed you, cosine over sine is just um, cotangent and it also works for squares too. cosine theta squared over sine theta squared is just cotangent theta squared and then this 9 over 9 would just cancel out so we can say this is equal to the integral of cotangent theta squared d theta right so remember using the Pythagorean trig identities cotangent theta squared 
is equal to cosecant theta squared minus one. So instead of this cotangent theta squared, we can just put cosecant theta squared minus one. We can put that here instead of cotangent theta squared. So let's do that. Let's do the integral of cosecant theta squared minus one d theta. This right here is very easy to integrate because the integral of cosecant theta squared is just cotangent and the integral of one would just be theta. So then that's just like, it's just basically, this is something easy to integrate. So yeah, that was the goal. Anyway, let's go to step four. All right, so for step four, what we're gonna do is we're gonna integrate the integral that we got from the last part of step three. Then we're gonna put it, we're gonna put the answer back in terms of dx. Okay, so what did we get from the end part of step three? Oh, this is my pencil, let me get my pen. So we got the integral of cosecant theta squared minus one d theta. So obviously this can be broken down into the integral of cosecant theta squared d theta minus the integral of one d theta, which would just be negative cotangent theta minus theta plus c. So this is in terms of d theta and we have to put this answer in terms of dx because the original problem was in terms of dx. So um, let's recall that x is equal to three sine theta, right? So since x is equal to three sine theta, let's solve for sine theta. Um, let's take three out from both sides and then we get x over three is equal to sine theta. So since x over three is equal to sine theta, recall also that sine theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse side. Now remember when I was talking about like if we were to draw a triangle, the sine of theta would be equal to the opposite side of the triangle, the opposite side of the angle over the hypotenuse side of the angle. So since sine theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, and sine theta is equal to x over three, we can conclude that x over three is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So let's draw like, oops, sorry, I almost flipped the camera. So let's draw a triangle, right? And let's make this angle in the triangle theta. Since the sine of theta is x over three and the sine of theta is also the opposite side of the hypotenuse. And that means the sine of theta would be, that That means x is the opposite side. So x is the opposite side of theta. So this would be x because this is the opposite side of theta and three would be the hypotenuse. So this is three right here. And we have to find this uh, unknown side, right? So let's call this unknown side R and let's try to solve for R. So using the, oh, this is a right triangle, by the way. So using the, the Pythagorean theorem, you can say this squared plus this squared equals this squared, and then let's solve for R. So X squared plus R squared equals three squared, then let's solve for R here. So put X squared on that side to get R alone, R squared alone. And then R squared is equal to three squared is just nine, nine minus X squared. Square root of both sides. We would get R is equal to the square root of nine minus X squared, right? So this R right here is equal to the square root of nine minus X squared. So, all right, so let's continue on with step four. So if you remember the triangle, why do I keep using my, getting my pencil instead of my pen? Okay. so. Um, if you remember from the last part, the triangle looked like this. This was theta, and then this was x, this was three, then the third, the other side was r equals the square root of nine minus x squared, right? So the answer to the integral before, right? It was answer to integral was was negative cotangent theta 
minus theta plus c, right? So cotangent theta is equal to the adjacent side over the opposite side. So the adjacent side of this theta is 9 minus x squared. So that would just be 9 minus x squared. Then the opposite side of this theta right here, let me make it look more like a theta and less like a zero. Sorry, kind of messed it up, but whatever, you guys get the point. Um, the opposite side of this theta is x. So this will be x. So we have um, the cotangent theta part. We got that in terms of x, but now let's get this theta and put it in terms of x as well. So what would theta be in terms of x, right? So what would that be? So let's recall that x is equal to 3 sine theta. Let's just solve for theta. So uh, take 3 from both sides. So that we got x over 3 is equal to sine theta if you take the inverse side of the inverse sine of both sides so you do sine negative 1 x over 3 equals sine negative 1 of sine theta the inverse sine and the sine they just cancel out so all you have is theta left and then sine negative 1 to the power of negative 1 x over 3 so here we can see that theta is equal to the inverse sine of x over 3. And then cotangent theta is equal to the square root of 9 minus x squared over x. So negative cotangent theta minus theta plus c would be equal to negative the square root of 9 minus x squared all over x minus the inverse sine of x over 3 plus c. So I always like to end things out with a little conclusion every time I finish a, um, a problem. So in conclusion, we can conclude that the integral of the square root of 9 minus x squared all over x squared dx is equal to is equal to um, negative square root of 9 minus x squared all over x minus the inverse sine of x over 3 plus c. Let's do another example. Um, this is example 2. Um, it's the integral of x over the square root of x squared plus 16 dx. So for step 1, we'll choose what we'll let x equal. So what do we got? We got the integral of x over the square root of x squared plus 16 dx. Here, um, in this um, equation, the square root part is um, x squared plus 16. This matches the format of the square root of x squared plus a squared, because 16 is the square root, there's a plus sign in the middle, so on and so forth. So this matches the format of the square root of x squared plus a squared. Because of that, we're going to let x equal a tan theta. So since the square root of x squared plus 16 equals the square root of x squared plus a squared, we can conclude that 16 is equal to a squared. I'm doing this because you remember we have to find what a is because we have to figure out what we'll let x equals so we have to figure out what a is. So um, 16 is equal to a squared. Let's solve for a. Square root both sides. And then from there, we get that 4 is equal to a. Since, why do I keep making my a's look like 9's? Sorry guys. Since 4 is equal to a, we can say x is equal to 4 tan theta. So because of that, I'll say x is equal to 4 tan theta. All right, so for step two, we're going to rewrite the equation in terms of theta. So before, we have the integral of x all over the square root of x squared plus 16 dx, right? So since x is equal to 4 tan theta, everywhere we see x, we have to put 4 tan theta. So that would be the integral of 4 
tan theta all over 4 tan theta squared squared um, plus 16 let me put this over sign of a little bit and like I said before we have to put this in terms of the DX in terms of D theta how do we do that let's take um, this derivative with respect to theta DX over D theta that is equal to 4 secant theta squared if you cross multiply you get DX is equal to 4 secant theta squared D theta so we can put this instead of DX so we have 4 tan theta all over the square root of 4 tan theta squared plus 16 times 4 secant theta squared d theta this is the equation oh my god my nail broke oh my god sorry guys we're gonna pretend that that didn't happen anyway this is the equation in terms of theta let's go to step three all right, so step three is to simplify the equation. Like I said before, the goal is to simplify into something easy to integrate by using trig identities. Oh, I never put the second closing parenthesis. Sorry about that. Anyway, let's get started with step three. Um, so what we have from before, from the last uh, step, we had the integral of 4 tan theta all over the square root of 4 tan theta, this whole thing squared, plus 16 times 4 secant theta squared d theta. So let's start off with this 4 tan theta squared term, right? So 4 tan theta squared, that's just 16 tan theta squared, right? So if we were to put 16 tan theta squared instead of this, we would have this term. The square root of 16 tan theta squared plus 16. Now if we focus on the term inside of the square root, we would have 16 tan theta squared plus 16. Let's factor out this 16. Because remember, we're trying to simplify it into something easy to integrate using trig identities. So we're going to be using lots of trig identities and stuff to try to break it down and simplify it. So pay attention to how I'm simplifying it. So you square out the 16 and you get tan theta squared plus 1. Well, using the Pythagorean trig identities, this is just secant theta squared. So you can do 16 secant theta squared. So instead of this right here, instead of this, for this term inside of the square root, we can put 16 secant theta squared. So the square root of 16 secant theta squared, this right here, this term, this is equal to the square root of 16 times the square root of secant theta squared. So then this, the square root of 16 is just 4, and the square root of secant theta squared is just secant theta. So this is, so this is equal to 4 secant theta. So instead of putting the square root of 4 tan theta squared plus 16, seeing as how we broke it down, instead of this term right here, we can just put 4 secant theta. So let's rewrite it and do that. So now, we have the integral of 4 tan theta all over 4 secant theta times 4 secant theta squared d theta, right? So we can simplify this as well. We can, you know, um, yeah, we can just simplify it. So I'm about to cross some stuff out, so I'm going to rewrite it again so I can cross things out. 4 tan theta over 4 secant theta times 4 secant theta squared d theta. 4 and 4 is gone. Uh, secant theta squared and secant theta just cancel out to secant to the first power. So then that would be the square, that would be the integral of, well, the 4 is still there. So 4 tan theta 
times secant theta to the first power, which is just secant theta, d theta. And you know, just because I'm a stickler, I like to take the four out and also just to make it look like, I mean, it's the same thing, but just to make it look like something easy to integrate, I'm gonna put it as four uh, times the integral secant theta tan theta d theta. It's the same thing. I'm just a stickler and I like the secant theta there first because that's usually what it looks like. <laughs> but um, yeah, anyway, so four times the integral is secant theta tan theta d theta. This right here, this is easy to integrate. So now let's go to step four. All right, so we're almost done here. So step four, uh, we have to integrate and put it back in terms of dx. So the integral we got from the very last step of step um, three was the integral of, well, four times the integral of secant theta times tan theta d theta. So if you recall your trig integrals, this would just be four secant theta plus c. So we have to put this back in terms of dx though. So if you recall, x is equal to four tan theta, right? So let's solve for tan theta. x over four is equal to tan theta. But also remember how I said tan theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent? then that means that x over four is equal to opposite over adjacent. So if we were to draw a right triangle and we were to make this theta, then the tan of this theta, which is the opposite over the adjacent would be x over four. So x would be the opposite side and four would be the adjacent side. So we have to solve for this third side. Let's call this third side R, right? Oops, I almost messed up the camera. Hold on, let me fix it. So we have to solve for this third side R, right? So what is R equal? Let's find out. Sorry, that was a little mistake. R is equal to, so this, using the Pythagorean theorem when it comes to uh, right triangles, this squared plus this squared is gonna equal this squared. So, what is r equal? Let's see. So x squared plus 4 squared is going to be equal to r squared. So let's solve for r. So x squared plus 16 equals r squared. Take the square root of both sides. x squared plus 16 equals... The square root of x squared plus 16 equals the square root of r squared. So you get the square root of x squared plus 16 is equal to r. So we're going to put that here. So we're gonna put that r is equal to x, the square root of x squared plus 16. So since the answer to the integral before, answer to integral is equal to four secant theta, right? Well, plus c, four secant theta plus c. Well, secant theta is equal to the hypotenuse side over the adjacent side. The hypotenuse side is the square root of x squared plus 16, and the adjacent side of this theta is four. The adjacent side here is four. So the answer in terms of x would just be, um, since it's four secant theta plus c, and this is secant theta, it would be four times the square times times the square root of x squared plus 16 all over 4 plus c and then we can just cancel this 4 and 4 out so we can just really say that the answer is really the square root of x squared plus 16 plus c and like I always say, I always like to end things out with a conclusion. So here we can conclude from this problem that the integral of x all over the square root of x squared plus 16 dx is equal to the square root of x squared plus 16 plus c. All right, that's the answer.
All of the notes in this video and these examples have been uploaded in the Google Drive link in the description below. I also have a third example where I use A secant theta. In the first two examples, I use examples that have A sine theta and A tan theta. But I have a third example where I use A secant theta. That third example is also available in the Google Drive link as well. All right, guys, so that pretty much sums up this topic, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.